Hey everybody, Emma's Farzan here, and welcome back to this video series on how to make a 2D multiplayer tabletop card game using Unity and Mirror. In this episode, we're going to take a look at sync variables, also known as sync vars, um, that uh, will be helpful in understanding how to synchronize, you guessed it, variables across the network. Mirror has a bunch of uh, built-in functionality with synchronization, like sync uh, events, or I think sync, sync events might be deprecated actually, sync lists uh, and other things. You can check them out on the, um, on the Unity, um, excuse me, the Mirror website. Uh, for um, if you check through the documentation, you can see all different uh, kinds of uh, examples of what they're used for. In our case, we're just going to use a very simple um, uh, use case scenario uh, uh, called um, we'll call it increment click to increment a sync uh, variable uh, every time someone clicks a card and make sure that that's um, that variable is synchronized across the network. Then you could imagine perhaps you need to do this for your health bars or for damage or, I don't know, um, mana or something like that in your card game. I'll let you pick the, uh, the implementation, but here's, here's a basic example of how it works. Like we've done in previous videos, we're going to create a new script in our scripts folder. We're going to call it increment click or, yeah, increment click. That's right. Open it up. And I'll open up my cheat sheet on my second screen. Um, and uh, we'll make sure that it is using mirror and deriving from network behavior. And as we've done, feels like a million times before, we're going to declare a public player manager called player manager and you'll find that um, in the documentation that sync sync fair um, declaration requires the sync ver attribute immediately pre preceding it and we'll just call this a public integer number of clicks equals zero Okay, that'll be our, our sync variable. The, the first time I, um, first few times I was working with sync variables, I was kind of thinking of something as local that would be updated, you know, somehow by clicking on something or whatever. It's just important to, to Im impress upon your mind right now that the sync, var sync variables and all, all, all synchronization needs to be managed by the server. We'll see what that means in just a moment. We'll create a public void increment clicks. And as we've done before, we'll locate the player manager within the, the client that's that's um, um, handling this and we'll say network identity, lowercase network identity, call this whatever you like, equals network client dot connection dot identity and then our player manager is going to be attached to that so network identity dot get component player manager okay and then that player manager will have a command that will write command increment Click, and we'll pass into it this game object. Okay, we haven't written that yet, so that's why we have a squiggly line here. And let's then move over to our player manager script. And at the bottom of this script, you can clean this script up as uh, however you'd like. I know we've added a lot to it. Um, we'll have the command attribute before it, this header. And we'll say public void CMD increment click. Remember, we do need to have that CMD uh, um, prefix for any command that we run here. And it will take a game object card 
And all that's going to do is going to waterfall to an RPC, a remote procedure call, increment, click, and pass in that card game object as well. And our client RPC, which is required for us to put that attribute right before it, could be a private RPC using that RPC preface or uh, prefix. RPC increment click, passing in the card, and we'll say card dot get component increment click get the increment click script attached to the card and find the public variable number of clicks and just increment it. Number of clicks plus plus. And then log it to the debugger. Debug log. This card has been clicked space and then plus card Dot get component increment click script parentheses dot number of click and then plus and then space times. It's a little bit circular, but then here's what's happening. When somebody clicks this card, um, it should, uh, well, it, it starts out having zero number of clicks. And then um, it should find the player manager in the in the scene, run the command, the uh, uh, which is asking the server to do something while um, passing in that game object. The command then waterfalls to a remote procedure call, um, also passing in that game object and uh, asking all clients to uh, to do this remote procedure call, increment click, using that card. Because uh, all cards will have that card in their scene uh, because it's been spawned by the server, um, they, they, um, each client should get the component, the increment click script component, and um, access the number of clicks, which is currently zero, and then uh, just increment it by one. And log to the debugger, this card has been clicked um, a number of times equal to number of clicks. And uh, the... Uh, server is then handling the synchronization for us. Let's um, let's see that in action. Let it compile. Control B to build. Now I should mention that uh, behind the scenes, when trying to build this uh, this particular scene, for some reason I was receiving really weird er errors about serialization from. Uh, mirror and just um, changing a few small things, um, copying and pasting in the script and just uh, leaving it as normal and saving it again seem to have uh, cleared up the issue for me. So if you encounter that, maybe just try and um, change a few things in your in your script and then uh, and then just restore it to the way that we had it uh, before the issue started and see if that uh, that works for you. I have no idea why it was doing that for me. And uh, if you if you do run into an issue and aren't able to solve it, just check out the um, the sample script. Uh, it certainly works for me, as you'll see in this video um, uh, that that I provided in the description for this uh, this video. Uh, you can also always hit us up on our discord if you run into some sort of error uh, that you can't resolve. OK, so um, what we haven't really done here is attach this uh, increment um, click uh, script to our uh, card prefabs, nor have we set it up in the event trigger to um, uh, call the increment clicks uh, method when somebody clicks on the card. So let's do that here. We'll go to our card one, add your increment click uh, script component. And, um, you know, just as we've uh, um, uh, done before, we can. Um, uh, see that our player manager here is found at runtime, but uh, there are certain things with sync variables that if you want um, the owner uh, to to be uh, sync this variable, to have this variable sync for them or observers to be done so, you can look in the um, uh, mirror documentation to learn more about how to use this properly. Uh, for our purposes, it'll work just as we've done it here. 
and we'll also go up to our pointer down event uh, trigger and add here when somebody uh, when the clicks the pointer on this um, uh, card right now we already have an event that allows us to do our target remote procedure call which we did in a previous video here we're going to drag card one to this field so that we can access the increment click script uh, attached to it and run the increment clicks method. We'll do the same in card two. We'll add increment click script component and feel free to um, you know move all your components as you like so they're all in the in one place where where you like them maybe all your scripts in one place or however you organize things. We'll add under the pointer down event another um, behavior drag over card two so we can access increment click and um, use the increment clicks method here. So now save my scene and build it by hitting control B. Wait for it to do its magic because it is magic. And now when the game is built We're going to say that as the editor, I'm going to run as a host, which is the server plus client A, and you're going to run as client B. You're going to draw cards. I can see the backs of them. I'm going to draw cards. You can see the back, backs of them. Now, when, I, um, when you click on one of your cards, I see in my debugger this card has been clicked one time. That refers back to our increment clicks, our number of clicks um, uh, synced variable. Now, which card do we click? We click the blue card uh, at the edge of your your player area. So that's the blue card on the edge of your of um, my enemy area, and I see this card has been clicked two times. This card has been clicked three times and four times, but now I click the one next to it and it says one time, or now two times. This And the first one still stays to five. Same when I click on, let's say, my middle card, which is a pink card, it says uh, one card and targeted by self because that's from our target procedure call. And you click on the middle card in your enemy area and it'll say this card has been clicked two cards and it has been targeted by other. That shows that our remote, our target remote procedure call and also um, our sync variables are working properly. Um, and uh, so yeah, that's how we use sync variables in our uh, 2D card game setup. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, uh, please be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel for more. Uh, in um, the next few videos, we're gonna be looking more at like the um, uh, some of the uh, um, surrounding aspects of how to work with uh, uh, Mirror and Unity. This this pretty much comprises the the logic and functionality in terms of our scripts and um, how the game should work uh, uh, in terms of the overall logic. But we want to see things like how do we um, display the uh, the um, uh, the debugger text, the logs on. Um, a built client. Um, so right now we don't see any logs here and we want to be able to do that. Uh, we also want to um, uh, uh, see how to use a tool called, tool called Peril Sync so that we don't have to uh, build the game scene every time. And we'll also talk a little bit about um, collaborating uh, with other people using Unity um, some collaboration options and uh, and uh, brief discussion on options for deployment for your game. So look forward to that in um in upcoming videos in this series. So stay tuned for that, and um, you can also follow me on Twitter. And I'd love for you to check out my games at nightpathpub.com or just follow the link in the description for this video. And we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.